Hi everyone, this lesson is on personality. More specifically, we are talking about the five factor model of personality. So we're going to talk about the big five factors that make up a person's personality. So in each of those factors, we're going to talk about different traits that an individual may have. And each person is going to be slightly different on each of these factors. So the five factor model of personality is a personality model based on factor analysis that was derived by different groups of psychologists. So some include Goldberg and McCray and Costa. And what was found was that when these different groups of psychologists looked around the world, looked at many, many individuals from around the world, from different cultures, what was found was that there were five factors that held stable and were common amongst people from around the world. And these are what we call the big five personality traits. Each factor is relatively stable throughout life. So when you have formed your personality, they are relatively stable throughout life, although some of them may change as an individual gets older. And we'll briefly talk about that when we go through this lesson. And because of this relative stability, there may be some genetic basis for each of these traits. And there may also be some cultural influence on these traits as well. And these traits include the following, openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. So we're gonna talk about each of these in the next upcoming slides. And a way to remember these five factors is by the mnemonic ocean, so O-C, E-A-N, openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Now, before we get into each of these factors, let's briefly talk about the underlying physiology of these traits. So with regards to openness and extroversion, these are more associated with changes in dopamine, so the neurotransmitter dopamine. And conscientiousness, agreeableness, and neuroticism are more likely to be associated with changes in serotonin. So these are the fundamental differences in these traits. Now, with regards to neuroticism, it's important to note that neuroticism is associated with alterations in a particular gene, and that gene is the SLC6A4 gene. So I just wanted to briefly mention the neurotransmitters and some possible genetic influences on some of these traits. Now let's talk about openness. Now for each of these personality factors, an individual will fall somewhere on a spectrum of that particular factor. And on one end of the spectrum, we have low openness. On the other end of the spectrum, we have high openness. So each of the factors we're gonna talk about in this lesson have a particular spectrum with being very high on one end of the spectrum and very low on the other end of the spectrum. And an individual is going to fall somewhere on that spectrum. For openness, we'll first talk about what it is to be high in openness. So if an individual is high in openness, they're more likely to be open to new ideas and new information. So they're more interested in learning, learning new information, very interested in education. They're oftentimes going to be creative and artistic, or they're going to have a very strong appreciation for art. They're oftentimes going to be curious. They often have a flexibility in thinking, and they are often very imaginative individuals. Now, if we go on the opposite end of the openness spectrum, low openness individuals are not interested in new ideas or information. They're not interested in artistic expressions. So they're not interested in art. They're not interested in creativity and those types of endeavors. They're oftentimes going to be more inflexible in their thinking. They are going to be very fixed on certain ideas and they're going to dislike change. And before I move on from openness, it's important to note that Openness may change throughout an individual's life. Sometimes an individual may be more open when they're younger, and as they get older, their openness can decrease. So this is something we can note with openness. Now let's talk about the personality factor known as conscientiousness. So as I mentioned before, an individual is going to fall somewhere on a spectrum of each of these personality factors. So an individual can fall somewhere between or at the extremes of the spectrum from low conscientiousness to high conscientiousness. So individuals who are high in conscientiousness are going to be diligent. They're going to be hardworking individuals. They're going to be well-organized and orderly. They're oftentimes going to be very disciplined and they're going to be punctual. So they're going to care about being on time and they can often be considered reliable. Interestingly, conscientiousness is associated with disgust sensitivity. So individuals who are higher in conscientiousness are more likely to be disgusted by certain stimuli. On the opposite end, low conscientiousness individuals oftentimes are going to have a poor work ethic. They're going to be considered unorganized or not disciplined. 
they oftentimes are going to run late. And because they run late, they may be considered unreliable. So they're not able to keep up with certain schedules. The next personality trait we're going to talk about is extroversion. So an individual is going to fall somewhere on the spectrum from low extroversion to high extroversion. On the extreme of high extroversion, this is going to be considered an extrovert. So these individuals are going to be highly social. They're going to seek out social activity. They're going to be talkative. They're going to be very energetic. And they're oftentimes going to be positive individuals. And they oftentimes are going to seek out opportunities for excitement. Now on the other end, low extroversion individuals are going to be considered the introvert. They're going to be individuals not interested in relationships. They're oftentimes going to be considered quiet or not social. They're going to avoid large crowds most often, and they're going to feel very tired after socializing as opposite to individuals who are high in extroversion. They may actually feel more energized from socializing. Now let's talk about agreeableness. So with agreeableness, if an individual is high in agreeableness, they're going to be people that are interested in relationships. They're going to be people that are friendly. They're going to be considered compassionate, empathetic, and caring. They're going to be interested in others' problems. So they're going to be interested in other people's problems because they care about those people. They're oftentimes going to be compliant and cooperative. They oftentimes avoid conflicts, so they're conflict avoidant. They're oftentimes going to be considered honest people. They're oftentimes considered to be polite, and they respect authority. And because of all these, they oftentimes work well in teams. Now, this is in contrast with people who have low agreeableness. They are oftentimes going to be blunt and outspoken. They are oftentimes going to be considered stubborn, not cooperative. They can be argumentative. They can be competitive. They can be considered rude. And they can also be considered to take advantage of others. And they can also be considered by others to be self-centered. And individuals with very low levels of agreeableness are oftentimes the ones that do not respect authority. And the last personality factor we're going to talk about is neuroticism. Neuroticism is negative emotionality. And neuroticism is associated with increased prevalence of physical and mental disorders. Now, if an individual scores high on neuroticism, they're more likely to be anxious. So they're going to be prone to anxiety. They're going to be easily stressed and have low stress tolerance. So small things can make them very stressed very easily. They're more prone to emotional pain as well. They can oftentimes be considered to be irritable and prone to depression and have mood swings. So individuals with high neuroticism are going to have a lot of these characteristics or traits. Individuals with low neuroticism are considered stress tolerant. So it takes more stressors to actually cause a physiological response in these individuals. They're oftentimes going to be considered to have high emotional stability. They are calm during stress-inducing events, and they have a decreased tendency to worry. So all these traits are found in individuals who have low neuroticism levels. So that was a lesson on the big five personality traits. As I mentioned throughout this lesson, each individual is going to have a particular personality profile. So each individual is going to fall somewhere on each of these spectrums we just talked about, from low to high in openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. So each person is going to fall somewhere on the spectrum of each of those personality factors. And that will essentially define the temperament of the person. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.